Sir Scott Ritter was right. He was right about a lot of things, and he was spot on this time. So U.S. Military Corps of Officer Scott Ritter, he reveals the truth about Israel's war. In fact, Hamas officials issue a very chilling warning. Must teach Israel a lesson. Hamas threatens to attack Israel again and again. FBI Director Christopher Wray has warned that the ongoing conflict in the Middle East has raised the threat of a cyber attack against the U.S. Hundreds upon hundreds of U.S. protesters have been arrested. U.S. threatens Iran with a retaliatory attack against airstrikes in Syria. Iran's exiled crown prince calls out President Biden's weak policies. And FBI director warns the Senate. The FBI director warns the Senate that the Hamas could carry out attacks on U.S. soil. New York FBI director urges vigilance in a sit-down interview with Fox just one day after FBI Director Christopher Wray testified before Congress that the threat level in the United States is at a whole new level. The head of the FBI in New York says in his office is, it a, is at a state of alarm that is equal to what New York experienced right after 9-11. These are some concerning time, folks. And James Smith, James Smith is the assistant director in charge of the New York field office. And he warns that not only do we face Americans radicalizing themselves to carry out violence, but foreign groups no longer need to come to the U.S. They're recruiting Americans to radicalize. And he also says first contact is often made via social media. Guys, and he followed up and said that. They're running down every lead that's out there because they just don't know. Now, less than 48 hours ago, FBI Director Christopher Wray warned the Israel-Hamas war has raised the threat of attacks against Americans and the United States to a whole nother level. He went on to say that, quote, we assess that the actions of Hamas and its allies will serve as an inspiration the likes of which we haven't seen since ISIS launched its so-called caliphate several years ago. And this is what Christopher Ray shared with the Senate Committee on Homeland Security. He went on to say that we cannot afford, excuse me, he went on to say that we also cannot and do not discount the possibility that Hamas or any other foreign terrorist organization may exploit the current conflict to conduct attacks here on U.S. soil. So the head of the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the FBI, said that the most significant threat was to Jewish and Muslim communities in the United States. Now, just really quick uh, question, guys. Is anybody on this live with me at this time? Please just drop a quick hi in the comments and let me know that you guys are here. Now, FBI Director Christopher Wray has also warned that the ongoing conflict in the Middle East has raised the threat of a cyber attack against the U.S. Hey, awesome. I see you guys in the comments. I really appreciate you guys confirming. Uh, how are you guys doing tonight? Uh, out here, uh, the temperature has really dropped drastically, very dramatically in the last uh, three or four hours. Uh, it's probably 34 degrees outside right now. It's just crazy cold out here. Um, but in a statement to the Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Government Affairs, Christopher Ray said that there has been an increase in attacks on U.S. military bases carried out by militia groups backed by Iran and anticipates further physical attacks and not just physical attacks, but cyber attacks as well. He said that the cyber targeting of American interest and critical infrastructure has been seen conducted by both Iran and non-state actors alike. And this likely gets worse if the conflict expands. Uh, Suzanne Kidder, I, I'm worried. I understand. I hear you. Lulu, peace, everyone. Uh, Anthony Wainick, Jill Adams, The Rocks, Daniel Landberg, NR, uh, Jacqueline Green, Jan, Ruby, Ruby, uh, Ruby Thomas, Teresa Osentowski. I probably just butchered your name. I apologize. Uh, Malloy West. With all that's happening, can our military override our own government to stop invasions on the border? That's a good question. That is a very good question. Cash, Ryan, what's going on? Yeah, we're, we're living in the clown world, man. Uh, Joshua Jansen says, pray for the innocent. <sighs> I, I have no words. I really have no words, guys. So Dubai, uh, United Arab Emirates, Yemen's Houthi rebels, for the first time, 
earlier this week claimed missile and drone attack target targeting Israel, drawing their main sponsor, Iran, even closer into the ongoing Israel-Hamas war in the Gaza Strip and further raising the risks of a regional conflict erupting. So the Houthis had been suspected of an attack earlier this month targeting Israel uh, by sending missiles and drones over the over the critical shipping lane of the Red Sea and an assault that saw the U.S. Navy shoot down the projectiles. Now, this time on Tuesday, however, Israel said that its own fighter jets and its new aero missile defense system, it shot down two salvos of incoming fire just hours apart as it approached the country's key Red Sea shipping port. Now, the Houthis, who have held uh, Yemen's capital, Sana'a, since 2014, has been a part of the country's ruinous war, claimed three attacks on Israel, uh, a, a later uh, military statement without elaborating on the time frame of the operations and whether Tuesday's salvo represented uh, one or two attacks. Now, by the way, guys, uh, I know that the news that I've been sharing lately really hasn't been very good, but a lot of you guys have been asking me to keep you updated on what's really going on out there. So I'm doing my best to keep up with everything. These updates are coming out so quickly. It's just unbelievable and not in a good way. So if you guys appreciate the time and the effort that goes into putting these videos together, please do your boy a favor. Just drop a quick like for the video. Uh, it, it really means a lot to me. I, I totally appreciate that, you guys. And, you know, if, if you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. I appreciate that. So anyway, beyond the attacks that we saw, the U.S. shoot down missiles, there had actually been some mysterious explosion Thursday that hit Egyptian resort town of Taba, which is near the border with Israel. The blast, which Egyptian authorities have not yet explained, it wounded six people. So they're actually hitting uh, nice resorts now. It's just unbelievable. So Iranian leaders have warned that the world is closer to a regional war in the Middle East and that Israel has crossed the red lines, which, in the words of President Ibram uh, Raisi, may force everyone to take action. Now, my question for you guys is, do you believe that we are headed toward uh, World War III? Drop me some comments on that one, guys, because we, we're we're seeing some uh, we're we're seeing some really concerning activity, to say the least, here. Now, but Iran, they're walking a tightrope. They're walking a tightrope, and they're keen to avoid a direct confrontation, and therefore, uh, ultimately, blurring its red lines to avoid walking into a trap, and. <clears throat> Now, instead, it's leaning on these proxy militias around the region from its axis of resistance to launch uh, limited strikes aimed at Israel and U.S. military bases in Iraq and Syria. Um, yeah. So also the use of proxy forces, uh, chief among them, Hezbollah in Lebanon has also uh, it's got Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad in Gaza has been a trademark of Iranian foreign policy. Now, Iran says that while it supports such resistance forces, they act independently. Do you guys understand what that means? Uh, it, it almost sounds like six in one hand, half a dozen in the other, if you ask me. Uh, either, you, either you do support, you're going to admit it, or you're not. You know, like, which is it? Now, Iran says strikes on U.S. troops are due to its support for Israel. Presence in region Islamic Republic urges Washington to change its wrong policies to stop waves of attacks since the Israel-Hamas war has erupted. So, yeah, so Iran just said on Monday, just three days ago, that attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq and elsewhere in the region were a result, almost a direct result of wrong American policies, including Washington's support for Israel in its war against the Hamas terror group. Yeah, I, I can't make this stuff up, guys. I just I, I can't do it. I cannot make this stuff up. So uh, that's where we are right now. And, you know, uh, by the way, guys, I recently launched a brand new YouTube channel and it's called Truth Exposed. Now, I've received a lot of positive feedback from you guys already, and I just want to take a moment. I just wanted to thank you guys all for that. I really appreciate that. Now, if you haven't already, you know, feel free to check out the new YouTube channel called Truth Exposed and let me know what you guys think about that. You know, 
I've I've left the link for you guys in the description down below of this video, as well as in the pinned comments. So you guys can check out that uh, the new YouTube channel, uh, you know, whenever you like. So I'll leave a link for you guys so you can check it out. Now, um, uh, what was I going to cover with you guys? Oh, that's right. U.S. forces. So let's not forget about the fact that U.S. forces have been under repeated attacks in, in, in Iraq, in Syria, um, you know, since 2,500 Hamas gunmen poured into right across the Gaza border on October 7th, which ultimately pretty much sparked this whole freaking thing. They slaughtered at least 1,400 people, and at least that's the number that they're giving us. Who knows what the real number is at this point, but, <clears throat> but ultimately... Uh, this is what has sparked the whole thing, mostly civilians, mind you. These are civilians. Uh, many of these people, uh, in fact, I don't know how many of you guys uh, watch uh, Steve, uh, Stephen Gardner. Uh, he did an interview with one of the individuals who were actually in the vicinity of the attack during the time of the attack. And she actually gave firsthand experiences, literally just explaining how uh, I, I think she had just got out of the shower and all of a sudden there was a uh there was there was these sirens going off warning people to get into the bunker um so these are literally and in fact she was on vacation she was on vacation i don't know how many of you guys again i don't know how many of you guys watch stephen gardner or happen to catch the interview where uh just days after the attack uh she was interviewed because in fact she was actually on the last plane back to america leaving israel um yeah now <clears throat> I, again, I, it, I can't make any of this stuff up. Now, Israel has responded with some very insensitive strikes on Gaza and a gradually expanding ground operation declaring its intention to eradicate the terror group that, that rules the Strip. Now, according to Iran's foreign ministry, According to Iran's foreign ministry spokesperson, the attack on America bases or the attack on American bases in the region, specifically in Iraq, is the result of wrong American policies in the region, which we hope it will correct. Hmm. So that's kind of a soft way of saying that we're effed up and we need to clean up our mess. Do you guys agree with that? I mean, are, is, is, is America at fault here? This is this is a, an open-ended question I'm just going to ask you guys. Give me some feedback in the comment section. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think America is wrong for supporting Israel uh, financially and militarily? I'd just like to get some feedback from you. Now, he also said that the attacks were carried out by groups that oppose the U.S.'s presence in the region. And that American support for the crimes of the Zionist regime. So uh, he went on to say that you reap what you sow, urging the United States to stop backing Israel. Now, Iran, which supports Hamas financially and militarily, has hailed the October 7th onslaught as a success, by denied, but denied any kind of involvement. Now, the Iranian army's chief of staff, Mohammed Bergeri, he said on Monday that Hamas was ready for an Israeli ground attack. The White House has accused Tehran of actively facilitating attacks on U.S. forces in the Middle East. So uh, what are you guys' thoughts on what we've covered so far? Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, so Alan Olive says that we should support Israel. Uh, Lou David says time to repent and believe the truth. Man has failed completely. Uh, Tracy Hunter says we need to get a why from the IRS. We did it before in the past. Just saying. Um, yeah, so uh, so Gurpreet uh, Sembi says Maui or DHS build a wall around the entire fire and everyone that went back to jail and got arrested. We still we still don't know what happened here. Uh, it is Haitian style. Our government is helping this. Yeah, certainly. Uh, there's a lot of unanswered questions about the Maui situation, which we haven't touched in uh, recent days. Drop me some comments, guys. I appreciate that, Gun uh, Gurpreet. Do you think that we should uh, share additional updates w with regard to what has happened 
uh, semi-recently over in Maui, Hawaii. Drop me some comments down below if you guys would like me to give you guys an update, uh, do some background and, and research on what's going on with the Maui wildfire. Now, on Thursday, the U.S. military said that it struck two facilities in eastern Syria uh, used by uh, Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and uh, uh, affiliated groups. By the way, we've got hundreds of people in this live right now. If you guys, just at least half of you guys could drop a quick like for the video, I would totally appreciate that. What that does is it just lets YouTube know that you guys are enjoying the content and uh, and it tells YouTube to share it so that more people like you can discover this information and so that more people can be armed with the knowledge and understanding of what's really going on here. So. Iran's president, Ibram Razi, he said that Iran sees it as its duty to support the resistance groups, but has insisted that they are independent in their opinion, their decision, and their action. I, I don't buy that. You don't support people who you're not behind. You're not going to send money to uh, groups who... Uh, whose actions you're not kind of you're not supporting that doesn't make any sense you know so anyway the united states has around 2500 troops in iraq and some 900 in syria as part of efforts to prevent a resurgence of the islamic state uh terror group now iran's exiled crown prince calls out president biden's weak policies the exiled crown prince of Iran, he called out President Biden's uh, administration's weak policy after Iran's president issued an ominous warning that Israel's actions in Gaza may force everyone to act. Now, what does everyone mean? We've got a lot of stuff. We have a lot of uh, activity going on in this region here. Number one, they can shut down one of the uh, main waterways, which would force oil prices to shoot through the roof. That's number one. Um, uh, in addition to that, we're, we're seeing the possible expansion of multiple wars, multiple proxy wars at this time. Um, Israel, Hamas, Palestinians, uh, Ukraine, Russia, China, Taiwan, you see where this is going, right guys now. <clears throat> and earlier in, in, in today's live, I shared with you guys how, uh, they're, attacking Saudi Arabian resorts. I mean, not Saudi Arabian, uh, resorts in Dubai. So this is, this is clearly gotten out of hand. And there are a lot of regions that are now getting kind of pulled into this thing that ordinarily wouldn't be involved. The Iranian regime is trying to push the envelope uh, trying to see whether they can take advantage of a weakness, which currently seems to be the case. That's why they have become emboldened every time the West hesitates or doesn't apply the necessary pressure as it should have to at least contain this. This is coming according to the uh, to the crown prince. Now, President Biden has since received scrutiny for what his critics see as a soft stance toward Iran in the weeks since Hamas terrorists launched surprise attacks on residential areas in Israel on October 7th, including revived scrutiny from Republicans for unfreezing $6 billion in Iranian assets before the turmoil ensued. Now, do you guys think that President Biden's stance on this has been too weak, like as if he's not being uh, a strong enough, a strong enough representation for the United States of America? Uh, let me know you guys' thoughts on that. Do you support President Biden's stance and how he has handled things so far? And uh, do you think that we can make it out of this without finding ourselves in a World War Three situation? Um, let me know what you guys are thinking on that one in the comments. Now. Biden has also been has excuse me. Biden has also warned uh, Iran to be careful and said, "Don't escalate the existing conflict." Um, I'm starting to wonder if you know uh, other countries are truly respecting these warnings from President Biden. Now, meanwhile, at least 24 attacks on American forces in the Middle East have come from Iranian proxies in recent weeks particularly in the light of U.S.'s uh, support for his Israeli allies. Now, United States official, excuse me, United States President Joe Biden, his recent Oval Office address, it marked a very key moment in the deepening competition between America and its allies on the one hand 
and the axis of dictatorship coalescing around Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea on the other. Now, the speech effectively merged the war in Ukraine and the wider war brewing in the Middle East into two different theaters of the same conflict. And it also said that Hezbollah it also said that Hezbollah uh, now also attacks, and it will present the United States, the U.S., and its allies with a significantly expanded theater, straining military resources yet again. Going back to what I was saying earlier, two proxy wars, a possible third war, and the potential to escalate into World War III. Now, at the same time, Taiwan seems even more likely to engage uh, and emerge as a third sphere of conflict in the next few years or perhaps even sooner. I mean, if history has taught us anything that, you know, if we think something's coming down the pipeline, chances are it's going to come sooner than what we expect. Right. So uh, and, and also Beijing has been boosting its military at the scale that um, that uh, that would literally make the U.S question whether or not it's able to handle it should a head-to-head uh, -head combat situation were to take place. But if that were to happen, we're definitely in World War III at that point. But the People's Liberation Army Navy is already numerically greater than the U.S. Navy, while its land forces and nuclear forces are growing apace. Now, meanwhile, in spite of everything that we've just covered, you know, regardless of how long the war on the Ukraine lasts, Russia's busy expanding its armor production, including the recovery of damaged equipment from the battlefield between Russia and the Ukraine, while running a wartime production system at home. Now, Moscow has shown its it's it's shown that it understands mass. And, you know, after a year and a half, the Russian army is now capable of fighting off and mobilizing at the same time. And this is rather concerning with the goal of expanding its ranks to one and a half million. So to put it simply, America's adversaries are preparing for war. I hope it doesn't escalate to World War III, but, you know, it's out of my hands. Um, it may very well be out of President Biden's hands. We, you know, only time will tell. And yet in Washington, national security debates rarely begin with basic recognition that China and Russia are building their militaries not to deter, but to attack. Now, this this should now be the starting point of every conversation on U.S. and allied-based defense spending. But anyway, guys, that's all for now. Um, I'm definitely going to continue to provide you guys with the updates uh, that you've asked me for and that I believe that you guys really enjoy. Again, if you guys enjoy the content, please drop a quick like for the video. Uh, if you want to take a look at the new YouTube channel, I've left a link for you guys in the description down below this video, as well as in a pinned comment. The new channel is called Truth Exposed. I've already gotten a lot of positive feedback from you guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. Check it out. Let me know what you think, and I'm going to see you guys on the next one. Take care, be safe, and God bless.